Good day and God bless you. Welcome to the Bible reading in chronological order. We're just so grateful that you have joined us today and are participating with us in this venture. And I pray that uh, you would just bear us up in prayer. It has been quite challenging to get these done, even though we enjoy it so much to get these videos done and to get these overviews done and the scripture reading. Uh, with the power issues that we've been having in South Africa, it sometimes does get a little bit difficult. But we ask mostly that you would just pray for us and bear us up in prayer that the Lord would just help us in this venture as well. Today we're still busy in the book of Deuteronomy. And we're going to be dealing with four chapters today. So I'm going to try and keep the overview a little short or quite to the point. So we go into chapter 24. And we see that law is given pertaining to the following topics. The first of which is divorce for the sake of uncleanness. Now understand that this is not divorce for the sake of adultery or for the sake of fornication. This is for the sake of uncleanness. And look at it in, in, in the light of what's being said here as opposed to the law given to us in the New Testament uh, surrounding divorce. Uh, quite interesting and you can really if you're looking at the pictures looking at the types just try and formulate some ideas on this then we see that there is law given with regard to kidnapping or ransoming then we see that we have laws pertaining to pledges or lending laws pertaining to leprosy and when we look at these as a whole and we think to ourselves wow these are these are quite outrageous uh, situations you know and and quite outrageous scenarios Actually, just remember that there is no room for chaos. When the, law, uh, when the Lord is giving the law to man, he is, he is covering every eventuality, every situation. And this is so important then. God is not the author of confusion, but he is a God of order. Then we see that laws are given with regard to the hired servant and how a hired servant needs to be paid, both timely and fairly. Then we see the law of personal responsibility for one's own sin is given. This means that a father cannot be put to death for the sin of the children, and the children cannot be put to death for the sins of the father. But how does this then translate when it comes to the Lord Jesus Christ taking on our sin and dying in our place? Remember that the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ, was the payment for sin. He took our sin upon himself and he paid that price. Does it say that a Christian would not die? Well, this is a strange thing. And I want you to really ponder on this. But when we look at the writings of Paul in the New Testament and we see Paul says, I die daily. When we look at baptism, baptism is a symbol of dying to oneself. And so when it looks at it in this regard, you have to die to yourself. You have to be raised to newness of life in Christ Jesus. So when it says that you need to die for your own sins and, and this law is given pertaining to the personal responsibility, understand that we need to die to ourselves in order to be raised to newness of life in Jesus Christ. And once we are in Christ, uh, that's symbolized in baptism. Once we are in Christ, then we can be raised to newness of life in him, right? So that's very important that we understand that. And then we see that uh, the, the, the people are commanded to be charitable to the bondman, the fatherless, and the widow. Then we get to chapter 25. And chapter 25, we see if anyone is receiving stripes as a form of punishment, it cannot exceed 40 stripes. This is important because uh, the Romans actually calculated that uh, after 40 stripes, a person could really die from those wounds and those injuries. So this is, this is something that the Lord institutes before they tested out the theory, if I can say it in that way. But the Lord says so that there's no indignation between the brothers. Then we see that the ox is not to be muzzled when it treads out the corn, but it must be free to eat as it goes along. That ox is doing the work. It must be free to eat up the corn as it goes if it, if it uh, wants a little bit of food there. Uh, then we see that the law of the widow which has no children is given. So the younger brother must raise up seed for his older brother. If he fails to do this duty, he has to fulfill a ritual. And this ritual is a very strange one where he has to take out his shoe and things. And then his house will be known as the house of him that hath his shoe loosed. 
Very interesting. But if you look at it in the light of Ruth and Boaz, where Boaz was a near kinsman, but there was a nearer kinsman to Ruth, and then this man had to take out his shoe and all of this. Very, very important. When we get to the book of Ruth, we're going to come back to this, and we're going to see how beautiful this is, actually. Uh, then we see that uh, the punishment for an immodest woman is given, but it's within a particular scenario. Read that, try and understand it. There is a beautiful type in there if you're looking at the typology of this. Then we see that the people are commanded not to keep diverse measures. Everything needs to be in balance. And then the Lord commands that the memory of Amalek is to be blotted out. Then we get to chapter 26. And in chapter 26, we see uh, when the children come into the promised land, they will be required to offer a basket of first fruits to the Lord and make a confession before the Lord. This is very important and it tells you how this needs to be done. Then we see the law of the third year's tithes is given. Also very important, and it actually shows you then how the land of Israel uh, generated this, this wealth and all of these things and, and how the Lord blessed them in that when they kept this year of tithes. Then we see that the covenant between the, the Lord God and the children of Israel is declared again. You know, when we went through the Shema, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy might, with all thy soul. Very important. But we see it's given here in a slightly different uh, way, but really the same command. And I wanted to just reiterate again that that needed to be on the frontlet, on the forehead. And so I've put it in there. What does it mean that, we need to, that, that that needed to be worn on the forehead? It means it needs to be in the thoughts of your, uh, uh, of your mind and your heart. You need to meditate on these thoughts. And then it needed to be on the arm. What does the arm speak about? It speaks about the deeds. And so Christ needs to be in your heart and, uh, or in, in your mind, in your thoughts and in your deeds. And this is very important. Then we get to chapter 27 and we see the people are set up, uh, are, are to set up great stones and plaster them and write on them the law of God and to build an altar unto the Lord of whole stones. On these altars, on, on, on the altar that's set up, sacrifices are to be made to the Lord. Then we see that the tribes are divided by Moses on Gerizim and Ebal. And then we see the curses are pronounced on Ebal. Very interesting chapter. And the way, uh, the way it's, uh, it's read out is actually very beautiful as well. So please, I pray that you would enjoy the reading today. That the Lord would bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he give you peace. God bless you. Chapter 24 When a man hath taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes because he hath found some uncleanness in her, then let him write her a bill of divorcement, and give it in her hand, and send her out of his house. And when she is departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. And if the latter husband hate her, and write her a bill of divorcement, and give it in her hand, and sendeth her out of his house, or if the latter husband die, which took her to be his wife, her former husband, which sent her away, may not take her again to be his wife, after that she is defiled. For that is abomination before the Lord. And thou shalt not cause the land to sin, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. When a man hath taken a new wife, he shall not go out to war, neither shall he be charged with any business, but he shall be free at home one year, and shall cheer up his wife which he hath taken. No man shall take the nether or the upper millstone to pledge, for he taketh a man's life to pledge. If a man be found stealing any of his brethren of the children of Israel, and maketh merchandise of him, or selleth him, then that thief shall die, and thou shalt put evil away from among him. Take heed in the plague of leprosy, that thou observe diligently, and do according to all that the priests the Levites shall teach you. As I commanded them, so ye shall observe to do. Remember what the Lord thy God did unto Miriam by the way, after that ye were come forth out of Egypt. When thou dost lend thy brother anything, thou shalt not go into his house to fetch his pledge. Thou shalt stand abroad, and the man to whom thou dost lend shall bring out the pledge abroad unto thee. And if the man be poor, thou shalt not sleep with his pledge. 
In any case, thou shalt deliver him the pledge again when the sun goeth down, that he may sleep in his own raiment, and bless thee. And it shall be righteousness unto thee before the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not oppress an hired servant that is poor and needy, whether he be of thy brethren or of thy strangers that are in thy land within thy gates. At his day thou shalt give him his hire, neither shall the sun go down upon it, for he is poor and setteth his heart upon it, lest he cry against thee unto the Lord, and it be sin unto thee. The fathers shall not be put to death for the children, neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Thou shalt not pervert the judgment of the stranger, nor of the fatherless, nor take a widow's raiment to pledge. But thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in Egypt, and the Lord thy God redeemed thee thence. Therefore I command thee to do this thing. When thou cuttest down thine harvest in thy field, and hast forgot a sheaf in the field, thou shalt not go again to fetch it. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thine hands. When thou beatest thine olive tree, thou shalt not go over the boughs again. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow. When thou gatherest the grapes of thy vineyard, thou shalt not glean it afterward. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow. And thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in the land of Egypt. Therefore I command thee to do this thing. Chapter 25. If there be a controversy between men, and they come unto judgment, that the judges may judge them, then they shall justify the righteous and condemn the wicked. And it shall be, if the wicked man be worthy to be beaten, that the judge shall cause him to lie down and to be beaten before his face, according to his fault, by a certain number. Forty stripes he may give him, and not exceed. Lest if he should exceed, and beat him above these with many stripes, then thy brother should seem vile unto thee. Thou shalt not muzzle the ark, when he treadeth out the corn. If brethren dwell together, and one of them die and have no child, the wife of the dead shall not marry without unto a stranger. Her husband's brother shall go in unto her, and take her to him to wife, and perform the duty of an husband's brother unto her. And it shall be that the firstborn which she beareth shall succeed in the name of his brother which is dead, that his name be not put out of Israel. And if the man like not to take his brother's wife, then let his brother's wife go up to the gate unto the elders, and say, My husband's brother refuseth to raise up unto his brother a name in Israel. He will not perform the duty of my husband's brother. Then the elders of his city shall call him, and speak unto him. And if he stand to it, and say, I like not to take her, then shall his brother's wife come unto him in the presence of the elders, and loose his shoe from off his foot, and spit in his face, and shall answer and say, so shall it be done unto that man that will not build up his brother's house. And his name shall be called in Israel, the house of him that hath his shoe loosed. When men strive together one with another, and the wife of the one draweth near for to deliver her husband out of the hand of him that smiteth him, and putteth forth her hand, and taketh him by the secrets, then thou shalt cut off her hand, thine eye shall not pity her. Thou shalt not have in thy bag divers weights, a great and a small. Thou shalt not have in thine house divers measures, a great and a small. But thou shalt have a perfect and just weight, a perfect and just measure shalt thou have, that thy days may be lengthened in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. For all that do such things, and all that do unrighteously, are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Remember what Amalek did unto thee by the way when ye were come forth out of Egypt, how he met thee by the way and smote the hindmost of thee, even all that were feeble behind thee, when thou wast faint and weary, and he feared not God. Therefore it shall be when the Lord thy God hath given thee rest from all thine enemies round about in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it, that thou shalt blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. Thou shalt not forget it, Chapter 26. And it shall be when thou art come in unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance, and possessest it, and dwellest therein, that thou shalt take of the first of all the fruit of the earth which thou shalt bring of thy land that the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shalt put it in a basket, and shalt go unto the place which the Lord thy God shall choose to place his name there. 
And thou shalt go unto the priest that shall be in those days, and say unto him, I profess this day unto the Lord thy God, that I am come unto the country which the Lord sware unto our fathers for to give us. And the priest shall take the basket out of thine hand, and set it down before the altar of the Lord thy God. And thou shalt speak and say before the Lord thy God, A Syrian ready to perish was my father, and he went down into Egypt, and sojourned there with a few, and became there a nation, great, mighty, and populous. And the Egyptians evil entreated us, and afflicted us, and laid upon us hard bondage. And when we cried unto the Lord God of our fathers, the Lord heard our voice, and looked on our affliction, and our labor, and our oppression. And the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand, and with an outstretched arm, and with great terribleness, and with signs, and with wonders. And he hath brought us into this place, and hath given us this land, even a land that floweth with milk and honey. And now, behold, I have brought the first fruits of the land which thou, O Lord, hast given me. And thou shalt set it before the Lord thy God, and worship before the Lord thy God. And thou shalt rejoice in every good thing which the Lord thy God hath given unto thee and unto thine house, thou and the Levite and the stranger that is among you. When thou hast made an end of tithing all the tithes of thine increase the third year, which is the year of tithing, and hast given it unto the Levite, the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, that they may eat within thy gates and be filled. Then thou shalt say before the Lord thy God, I have brought away the hallowed things out of mine house, and also have given them unto the Levite, and unto the stranger, to the fatherless, and to the widow, according to all thy commandments which thou hast commanded me. I have not transgressed thy commandments, neither have I forgotten them. I have not eaten thereof in my morning, neither have I taken away aught thereof for any unclean use, nor given aught thereof for the dead. But I have hearkened to the voice of the Lord my God, and have done according to all that thou hast commanded me. Look down from thy holy habitation from heaven, and bless thy people Israel, and the land which thou hast given us, as thou swearest unto our fathers, a land that floweth with milk and honey. This day the Lord thy God hath commanded thee to do these statutes and judgments. Thou shalt therefore keep and do them with all thine heart and with all thy soul. Thou hast avouched the Lord this day to be thy God, and to walk in his ways, and to keep his statutes, and his commandments, and his judgments, and to hearken unto his voice. And the Lord hath avouched thee this day to be his peculiar people, as he hath promised thee, and that thou shouldest keep all his commandments, and to make thee high above all nations which he hath made, in praise, and in name, and in honor, and that thou mayest be an holy people unto the Lord thy God, as he hath spoken. Chapter 27. And Moses, with the elders of Israel, commanded the people, saying, Keep all the commandments which I command you this day. And it shall be on the day when ye shall pass over Jordan unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, that thou shalt set thee up great stones, and plaster them with plaster. And thou shalt write upon them all the words of this law, when thou art passed over, that thou mayest go in unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, a land that floweth with milk and honey, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee. Therefore it shall be, when ye be gone over Jordan, that ye shall set up these stones, which I command you this day, in Mount Ebal, and thou shalt plaster them with plaster. And there shalt thou build an altar unto the Lord thy God, an altar of stones. Thou shalt not lift up any iron tool upon them. Thou shalt build the altar of the Lord thy God of whole stones, and thou shalt offer burnt offerings thereon unto the Lord thy God. And thou shalt offer peace offerings, and shalt eat there and rejoice before the Lord thy God. And thou shalt write upon the stones all the words of this law very plainly. And Moses and the priests, the Levites, spake unto all Israel, saying, Take heed and hearken, O Israel. This day thou art become the people of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord thy God, and do his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day. And Moses charged the people the same day, saying, these shall stand upon Mount Gerizim to bless the people when ye are come over Jordan. Simeon, and Levi, and Judah, and Issachar, and Joseph, and Benjamin. And these shall stand upon Mount Ebal to curse, Reuben, Gad, and Asher, and Zebulun, Dan, and Naphtali. And the Levites shall speak and say unto all the men of Israel with a loud voice, 
Cursed be the man that maketh any graven or molten image, an abomination unto the Lord, the work of the hands of the craftsmen, and putteth it in a secret place. And all the people shall answer and say, Amen. Cursed be he that setteth light by his father or his mother, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that maketh the blind to wander out of the way, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that perverteth the judgment of the stranger, fatherless and widow, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that lieth with his father's wife, because he uncovereth his father's skirt, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that lieth with any manner of beast, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that lieth with his sister, the daughter of his father, or the daughter of his mother, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that lieth with his mother-in-law, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that smiteth his neighbor secretly, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that taketh reward to slay an innocent person, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them, and all the people shall say, Amen.